I grew up camping and after a fun day in the outdoors, it was always such a treat to sit around the campfire and have dinner. But there's so much more to camp food than just hot dogs and hamburgers. We learned how to elevate our camping fare. Jimmy Kennedy is passionate about cooking. Everything's good and hot. I guess that's where I first learned to be creative, you know, in our kitchen at that time, which was the outdoors and hack recipes and to just have a great time doing it. I think people fall in that routine of just grilling hot dogs, opening up a big bag of chips, and I love that as much as anyone, but I think it's, it's more fun and a lot healthier too, to, you know, get the kids involved and be creative, let them help make all kinds of different things and, and just make it a little fancy. And he's not kidding. First up, perch stuffed corn husks. Jimmy, it's not unusual to see corn on the cob around a campsite, but we're doing something a little different with it. We are. We're going to use the corn, the husk, to actually cook the food. This is kind of like our vehicle for cooking and for eating. It makes okay. a great presentation. I've made it hundreds and hundreds of times now, and it's made with corn, okra, uh, tomatoes, and I've got some fiddleheads too. Here, awesome. Local fiddleheads. All so. right, I can't wait. What do we need to do? All right, do? so first, here, let's both shut one of these ears. Okay. Kind of leave it intact because we want to keep the husk in good shape here. Okay. A lot of these ingredients too, they just don't require much refrigeration either, so they're right. great for camping. I mean, the fish came from Lake Champlain, mm -hmm. you know, just caught it right out there, so it's northern pike. It's a little shallow here, but you never know. You just kind of fold all this back. And this makes like a really good little envelope for, for the fish. I mean, you can use beef, chicken, pork, or just vegetables, anything you want, but. So what did the husk do, almost like steam it inside? That's, that's exactly right. I mean, okay. just, you know, it tastes kind of like a tamale or yeah. masa. Like we put these in the water so they don't burn, but then it helps oh, it steam okay. it also, and it gives it just a great flavor. We're elevating our camp cooking, so we're gonna yes. cook before we stuff. Yes, we are. All right, so our corn goes in. We're gonna in. go in with the corn. What kind of pan do you want to use over campfire? I use cast iron okay. and some onions and tomatoes. This is a really tasty dish. When we put it on the plate, a lot of times people aren't expecting this. You know, they They're just, expecting corn. Yeah, so <laughs> then you, you put this thing on the plate, and like, how am I supposed to eat this thing? You just put the whole thing right on the plate. Wow. And your how friends and family impressive. be like, what are you doing? But it's a great oh way to eat goodness. it. And Look at that. It's pretty, huh? It's beautiful. And I mean, you really don't even need a plate. You know, today's Northern Pike, so. This and sometimes is it's just vegetables. Awesome. It has so much flavor. It does. Boy, I wish I had camp food like this growing up. <laughs> this is impressive, Jimmy. Button Bay State Park is where our foodie camping adventure is taking place. But there are plenty of other spots around the state to enjoy cooking over a fire. Uh, Vermont right now has 52 state parks. Um, we're, we're really quite fortunate because there are a lot of states in the, the country that have a lot larger population than we have with fewer state parks. So it's, it's, a, it's a legacy we've inherited and we're actually really quite fortunate. And if you're more of a tote bagger instead of a backpacker, several state parks have creature comforts like cabins with electricity. But there's no stove, except for the camp ring out front, which doubles as a stove and an oven if you know what you're doing. When you get there and you build a fire, and you start cooking, it's just remember, you have to remember to control. It's all about control. You don't want it too hot, you don't want it too cold. So that's kind of the real trick, is getting the right fire. Think about it, if you're going camping, eating is a big part of the camping experience. There's a lot of preparation and planning that goes into it. I think the food is different than in your kitchen, and, and even cleaning up after yourself. I mean, it's all different, um, and, but there's a little challenge to it. And we know folks that are just really into that challenge, they have a lot of fun. And we can't forget about breakfast. Here's a quintessential outdoorsy breakfast skillet. My favorite for this is onions, red pepper, and celery. Okay. It's kind of a kind of a Cajun blend, really. Yep. And then get that all nice and hot, add the bacon back in, and I have baked in our fire two sweet potatoes. Oh. I love these things. Just take these and cut them up bite size. I'll add some cheese in there and some eggs. And you can cook the eggs separately, like if you like them scrambled, yep. you can cook them separately and put them on top later. But okay. I like to, to kind of make a nest for them and mm -hmm. put them right on top and cook them. You know, yeah. use Vermont salumi, uh, any type of sausage, mm -hmm. andouille, chorizo. We just stir this up a little bit and we're just gonna cook this a little bit longer. Okay. 
everything's good and hot. And at this point, I kind of like to just break an egg in there. How fun is this? Yeah, this is good stuff. And I just do like one egg per person. Delicious and better yet, only one pan to clean. They're hard to beat and they're easy to make too. We're seeing an increase in visitation generally um, over last year, and, and, and last year was a 25-year record. So there's, there, there's lots of increased interest, and in, in camping, of course, is, is a big part of that. The final tip for your best ever camping trip, prep, prep, prep. Oh. For Jimmy, it's all about spending quality time with friends and family. To me, it's one of the most important things there is, especially these days, is to to get back to these state parks, to get back to the woods and to the lake and the rivers and enjoy the nature and enjoying good food outside is very important to me, always has been, and I wish people would do more of it.